Hi guys, my name is Chad Trofgerben. I am the founder and content creator for IncredibleTutorials.com. I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 9 tutorials. So let's get started. There have been quite a few changes made to the Anime Studio Pro 9 timeline. This tutorial will detail all the changes. So one of the first things I would like to point out is that when you are working on the timeline, in the past, if you use the wheel on your mouse, if you have a wheel on your mouse, you are able to scroll through the timeline horizontally. However, now you'll notice when I do this, I am scrolling vertically. This is helpful if you have a very cluttered timeline and you have many channels going at once. You can go through and scroll and easily find your channels and edit them accordingly. Now, if you were fond of the horizontal scroll with the wheel, you can hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and now use the wheel to page through your timeline. Additionally, as you probably know, if you go on your canvas and hold down the right mouse button and move around, you can move the canvas around. That same idea has now been applied to the timeline. So if you bring your cursor down here, hold in the right mouse button and move around, you can see I can go horizontally and vertically within the timeline. Again, this is useful if you need to page through the timeline, especially if you have a lot going on in the timeline. And I think this is further demonstrated if we go into graph mode. You can see now I can page through the graph, easily finding the motions I want to edit. Now when in graph mode, if you use your mouse wheel, you'll see that you can zoom in, allowing you to easily pinpoint actions in your keyframes. So I think you'll find this to be quite useful, especially if you rely heavily on graph mode with the timeline. Now I'll come back here to my channels. You may notice, especially if you're used to Anime Studio, that the copy, paste, and delete buttons are now gone. These actions are now controlled directly through the keyboard. Now in the past, let's say for instance that you select some keyframes here. And at the same time, you have an object selected on your canvas, as I do right now. In the past, if you hit the delete key or if you copied and pasted, you would affect the object on screen and not the keyframes. This has now changed. As you can see, I have three keyframes selected. And I can bring my scrubber over like this just to demonstrate this further. And if I hit the delete key, you can see that it just deletes those keyframes and my object on screen simply snaps back to the last keyframe. And all I did there was use the delete key on my keyboard. The same can be applied for copying and pasting. So if I select these three frames, I can go up to edit, copy, page forward here in my timeline, edit, paste. And you'll see those keyframes have now been copied and pasted on the timeline. Now just remember, if for instance I were here on frame zero and I have this item selected and I hit my delete key, you'll see that I delete the object. Even though my scrubber is on a keyframe, it's not selected, therefore I will delete the object. So just keep that in mind when working on your animations. And I know this is quite a change from previous versions of Anime Studio, but I believe as you get used to these features, you'll find that your workflow will greatly benefit from this streamlined process. Another new feature is, let's say for instance on the timeline, you select some keyframes because you're going to alter them in some way. But first you need to do something else. So I can come over here, make a new vector layer, go into this vector layer, and I can just do some drawing in here. Nothing really major, just whatever you plan to do with your animated project. So you go through, and you do all that. And now you want to go back to the other layer and alter your keyframes. So you go back to the other layer. You'll notice that your selected keyframes remain selected. This is a new addition. In the past, if you went out of a layer and did some other things and came back, those keyframes would be deselected. So again, this can speed up your workflow when working on animated projects. You have some new options when you right click on your keyframes. So, if I right click on this keyframe, 
you'll see you have your usual interpolation options such as smooth, linear, ease in and out, and so on. But also you have four new options below. First is hold. So if we click on that, you're given a window to enter in a duration. What this will do is it will hold your keyframe for as many frames as you dictate here and then animate to the next keyframe. So for instance, let's say I enter in five and click OK. Typically, when we are on this keyframe, this keyframe will begin and it will animate then to this point on the timeline, to the keyframe on frame 24. But with this hold feature in now, for hold for five frames, you'll see that my animation does not play out for those five frames. After those five frames, the animation will then play. In the past, you could do this with keyframes, like for instance, copying this keyframe and pasting it here to keep this object in place for those five frames. But now you can use the hold feature, if you wish, to use as an alternative to this method. So I'll just go back here and set this back to zero. Next on the list is interval. I'll get to this momentarily. I actually want to open up another project file to demonstrate this. So first I'll skip over to label. In Anime Studio 9, you can now label your keyframes. So let's say for instance, there's a certain keyframe that's very important. You can select a color to label it by. So let's say for instance, red. You can now see that that keyframe is red, highlighting it on my timeline essentially so that it'll draw attention. Maybe there's something I need to do there, like correct an animation, or I need to point this out to another animator who is looking at my project file. You can go in and label your keyframes a variety of different colors. So green, blue, purple, and so on. And then the last option on the menu is select keys to write. When you do this, you'll see it highlights all of your keyframes to the right. Now before in Anime Studio, if you had a lot of keyframes extending outward in your timeline, it could be very tedious to try to select them all and then scroll over and select more and keep doing that and so on. Now you can just select a keyframe, right click it, choose select keys to write, and now you can move all these keyframes to the right or to the left if you wish. Now I'll open a new file so we can check out the interval settings for Anime Studio 9. With this example, I have two layers on my project file. They are the exact same and move at the same speed. So if I hit play, we can see this take place. So now, if I come back here to frame zero and click on my second layer, which is the top layer, and then highlight all of the keyframes, right click on one of the keyframes and choose interval. I can now set the interval for this layer. In other words, I can set the speed or smoothness for this layer. The default is one, meaning it will play every frame. If you set it to two or three, it'll play every two or three frames and so on. This should be familiar for traditional animators. So for instance, animating at two or threes. So I will set this to three on all my keyframes for the top layer. Now, if we hit play, watch what happens. You can see that the top layer is moving not as smoothly as the bottom layer. And if we adjust this, let's say for instance, I go to six, and now play this, you can see it's even more obvious. This is the new interval setting for Anime Studio. So if I just go and set this back here to one, you can also affect just certain keyframes. So I have deselected all my keyframes and now I'm gonna right click on one keyframe and set the interval to four. So now if we come and play this, you can see right when we hit that keyframe, it starts to play at that interval. So what is the use for this? Well, if you want to create something that looks hand-drawn, something that's low-tech, you may want to use this feature. 
You could, for instance, have a smooth camera pan going at 30 frames per second. And then you could create other layers that are using this interval feature that are running at, let's say, 15 frames per second. So there are many different options here that you can play with. Finally, the two buttons above allow us to set the defaults for these particular actions. If we click on the button that has smooth, we can set this as a default for every new keyframe we create. So let's say in the future, if you want all of your keyframes to have ease in as their action, you can do so by clicking that button. And now every new keyframe you make will have ease in as a default. The same is applied for your intervals. So from here on out, if you want all new keyframes to have an interval of five, you could select that. And now when you make a keyframe, your intervals will change now to five. And if you ever want to see what the intervals are doing exactly, you can always go to your motion graph. As you can see here, it plays smoothly for that first keyframe. And then when we hit that second keyframe, it gets jittery. And that's what we see right here. So you may find that intervals are a new feature that you'll want to play with in Anime Studio. And that concludes the overview of the new enhanced timeline in Anime Studio 9. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys. I have many more tutorials out there, so check them out, and I'll see you next time.